Hello everyone, welcome back, hope you're all well. In today's video, we have another PS5, which has a no power issue. So uh, let's get into it. For your Xbox and PlayStation repairs, visit consoletherapy.com. So as I say, this PS5 is completely dead apparently. So once you connect up the power cord, it does absolutely nothing. So with the power cord connected, let's see if it does anything. Push the power button, push the eject button. Absolutely nothing. It is completely dead. Right, so let's get this one opened uh, and then we can start taking some measurements uh, around the motherboard and see what is going on. There we go. <laughs> right, so. Uh, let's reconnect the uh, power cord and let's uh, bring up our multimeter on the screen. Right, so oh, one of the things I noticed is um, this console's definitely been open before, right? I don't know if you can see here on the camera, but there's uh, some solder here on this ground pad uh, and there's some solder on these couple of pads here. Now that means someone has tried to connect in and getting reading some diagnosis through a UART reader. Um, and then also I noticed the fan connector is a little bit loose and it's been worked on. You can see there's some soldering here. So definitely been worked on before, which is not a problem, but let's just see what voltage we get. So black probe anywhere on ground. First of all, let's see if we get 12 volts from our power supply. Yes, we do, which is good. Do we get five volts from this top transistor here? Just to make sure we're on the leg properly. Yep, five volts from there. We should get three volts from this one here, the, the third transit or third IC down top leg. That should be three volts. Oh, but we're not getting three volts. Okay. Let's just quickly buzz around to the rest of the board. So we get five volts next to F7002, which is good. Uh, where else would we get five volts? Uh, we should be getting five volts from here. Yes, we are. Uh, these are 12 volts, so we get 12 volts here. Down here, we get 12 volts as well. And then down here by the power button, we should get three volts as well, but we're getting nothing. Right, so obviously we've got an issue with the three volt rail. So somewhere along the board, um, there's either a short or a faulty component, uh, which is stopping the three volts from powering up. Now that would be a bit of an issue if someone has previously tried to read um, uh, UART from the machine, um, they probably wouldn't have got a response because the South Bridge, I believe without three volts won't power up. Um, so we need to take the motherboard out and then just do a little bit more probing and do a bit of a visual inspection as well of the motherboard uh, because it has been worked on before. So we need to see what someone else has done to it. So let's get the motherboard out. Right, so with the motherboard out, we can just take a look around at the board itself. And straight away, I can see there is actually a load of flux around the South Bridge. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there is a load of flux around there. So someone's tried to do something around the South Bridge area. Obviously there's a dry patch on the APU as standard, uh, which wouldn't stop the three volt rail. We do need to fix that. Uh, what else? Uh, that coil or inductor looks, no. That is factory, just doesn't look very straight, but it is factory. Uh, nothing around the HDMI encoder, that looks factory. Just checking all the usual parts. Uh, apart from this, around here, that everything else looks untouched, which is a good sign. Right, so what we'll do, we will We'll pop out multimeter into continuity mode. And then what we'll do, we're just gonna quickly probe around the board, right? To see if we can quickly see any shorts, right? Obviously the obvious place to start is around the Southbridge area. Um, 
I'm going to check any uh, any of the uh, capacitors around the area to see if they're shorted. So one side of the capacitor will beep because that is uh, ground. The other side shouldn't beep. So all of they, all of the caps around there look good actually. Let's go down here. Right, so there's a definite short. You know, around this circuit here, there's a definite short. Certainly these two caps up here. So we know we've got a short there. Let's just have a quick check around the other caps, main caps on the board. Yeah, all good. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with the five volt rail as we know. Um, but this circuit here is definitely shorted. Right, so let's just remove that thermal pad. See if we can see anything on the IC underneath there. Tell you what was best, let's get under the microscope and then we can see it close up and we can buzz around it properly. Right, so here we are under the microscope and this is the south region you can see. Just wanted to show all of the uh, flux there. So definitely been reworked on before, previously. Down here is the dialog IC that's got the short, all right? So let's just quickly check that. So yeah, two ohms, obviously a short there. This side's ground, but definitely a short this side. Um, it does look like that, that dialogue I see has been replaced because there's a bit of flux around it. Whether that's just residue flux coming from when the south ridge has been worked on, I'm not too sure. Let's just check these caps around here. 6K, that's good. Uh, 285 and rising, that's good. Yeah, see, so it's just over here that he's shorting by the looks of it. Put this one down here. Uh, that is ground, that side. Yeah, 2K. Just quickly check the resistor. Yeah, that's good. Right, so although this circuit here is shorted, I don't think it's actually anything to do with this IC or uh, this actual circuit. I could be wrong. Because this has been worked on before, it's likely to be something to do with the South Bridge, right? Now, it looks like it's Pretty good job actually replacing it, but it might actually be someone's just tried to reflow it rather than replace it. So it might be a bad south bridge that someone actually hasn't replaced. So we might still need to replace it. But let's just buzz around some of the points around the south bridge and see what readings we get. So what I'm going to do is try and get this in focus first of all, and then take some readings from around the south bridge. So I'm going to pop the meter into diode mode, like so, and let's take some readings. Now these resistors along here, let me just turn the beeper off because that's going to get annoying. These resistors here on the right hand side, they should all read approximately the same reading of around 0.4647, there we go. So these should all read the same. So we'll just quickly just buzz through all of them. 0.45, 46, 46. They all seem to be okay. The outside of them should be around 0.5, so a little bit higher. So that should be close enough. That one, 0.47, that's fine. 0.47, that's fine. 0.48. Let's just go down to these resistors here. 
This one should be, I see, there you go. This one should actually be a lot higher than that. That should be about 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So that's quite low. That side should be about 0 0.5, which it is. Uh, this one is on the same rail, so that's going to be low as well. And this one should be around 0 0.5, so 0 0.46. That should be a lot higher than that. So, and that's probably a short, which is coming from the dialog IC anyhow, right? So what's best to do is just flip the board over and then just take a look at the rear side of the south bridge and just take some readings from these as well. And then flipping the meter into resistance mode, let's just take some readings around here. This one is always gonna be low because that's actually ground in the middle there. 25K, that's good. So measure this one. Yep, 253k, that's good. That one is quite low, actually. That should be higher. Oh, there you go, got a proper reading now. So 4k. 2.6k, they're all good. Let's just go through these ones. 5k. There we go, we've got a short on that one. So that should be, I think, around 3K. But that's the dead short as well. Yeah, so this inductor's dead short. That one's good. And that one's good. So what I think I'm going to do, right, the south bridge has been, yeah, been reflowed or someone's tried to replace it. Just for my own peace of mind, I'll actually replace the south bridge uh, and see if that removes the short, um, just to be on the safe side. If not, we'll have to do a little bit more digging around, uh, but my gut tells me it's the south bridge, mainly because right, there's loads of flux on there already, so someone's attempted to do a repair there already. So let's get the south bridge replaced. Right, so that's the south bridge replaced and all cleaned up. Let's just check if our short is gone. There's still some flux there, which I need to clean up, which I'll do later. All right, so black probe on ground. Has our short gone? Yes, it has. Perfect. That's ground. And our short has disappeared. Perfect. Right, so... Let me get everything cleaned up uh, and then we'll give everything a bit of a test. Right, so that's it temporarily put back together. So we're just going to give it some power and uh, we'll come in with our probes and check for that three volts. So meter in uh, voltage DC mode, uh, black probe on ground. Do we get five volts up here? Yes, we do. Do we get our 3.3 again? Yes, we do. Perfect. Right, should we try powering it on? Three, two, one. Perfect, there we go. Blue light. So I need to, uh, that should hopefully go to a white light. I need to clean all of this up. I do need to fix the fan connector. Um, so I'll do that off camera. One top tip for you when you are replacing the south bridge, always, always, always make sure you clean all the flux out from underneath the south bridge after you've replaced it. There you go, white light. Um, so shout out to Toltec uh, for this tip. Um, I'll link. Uh, I'll put a link to his channel in the section below. Go and check his channel out, amazing channel. Um, the guy is a wizard when it comes to repairing PlayStations. Um, so really highly recommended his channel, so go over there and check that out. Um, but it's actually Toltec that actually found this out, right? If you have too much flux underneath the uh, actual south bridge after you've replaced it, 
Um, it does cause issues um, with the oscillator circuit, which is which runs next to the the, the south bridge. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, make sure you clean out all of the flux from underneath the south bridge. This is rebooting, obviously rebooting its database. Um, but let me get it put back together again, uh, and then we'll give it a thorough test. So there we go, all back together and working again. You can see the white lights just down there. So a video to show you how to repair uh, a missing three volt rail or 3.3 volt rail in a PlayStation 5. Uh, as you saw, we checked the for shorts and then it turned out that obviously the South Bridge was at fault. Replacing the South Bridge solved the problem. So uh, I do hope you found the video useful. If you did, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. We are posting more and more videos and posting a new video every Sunday from now on. So thanks very much for the view. Really do appreciate it. Till the next time, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now.